Good evening to all. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic which is rotor thrust. Rotor thrust or rotor axial force both are same thing because if you understand this what is rotor thrust or what is rotor axial force then only you can very well design the axial bearing of compression. Please note that we are going to discuss only the rotor thrust part for compressor which is having only one impel and that is called single stage compressor. Of course, uh, the rotor thrust is taken care by the axle bearing or thrust bearing. So if you calculate or if you understand what is the net force or net axial thrust on the rotor, then only you can very well design the axle bearing. You can see this is a single stage stage and uh, impeller you can see uh, say the same thing because a stage is one compressor so it is a rotor that means it has shaft you can see this is shaft it has a gear attached to the shaft and it is impeller which is also attached or bolted this is actual photograph of rotor of single stage or one impeller and this is a just a not exactly the same one diagram but uh, some other uh, rotor but design is also similar for single stage now question comes up uh, why rotor is having actual thrust of course it is because of pressure variation because because of change of the pressure, the force is also changing. So what are the pressure which is contributing the axial thrust change? Or in turn, you can say, what are the axial forces which can cause the rotor to have thrust in particular direction? As said, this is a impeller. Sometimes it is also called wheel but in case of compression normally it is called impeller and this is shaft shaft is consisting gear and all uh, you know rotating component is called rotor so this is shaft and this is impeller which is attached to this same thing it is shown here this is shaft and this is impeller now the process diagram or process flow what happens to compression compressor takes the process gas which is sucked here and it is discharged to process. So this is a single stage compressor. This is only one stage, one impeller. Please note that, please don't confuse about the discharge pressure although it is shown here, but this is not the discharge pressure at impeller outlet. Discharge pressure is considered uh, the outlet at casing of the compressor impeller outlet pressure will be ha approximately half or we cannot say half but very closer to half if you can con consider the discharge pressure so impeller pressure of course at impeller outlet is uh, less than compressor discharge pressure this this term is very important to understand because we are going to calculate the axial forces so press understanding of pressure is very important so same thing it is shown here the process is sucked here and it is discharging this is single stage so it has only one impeller now of course impeller geometry is fixed once it is fixed certainly its dimensions are also fixed so there is no change in the geometry there is no change in the dimension so of course there will be change in the pressure so 
force is product of a multiplication of its geometry or area into the pressure so since area is not going to change the only change will be only the pressure so what are the pressures which is acting on the rotor you can say you can see here this is suction pressure which is acting on impeller this portion only the this portion discharge pressure of course it is not seen shown here it is a casing outlet pressure it is also written it is not the impeller outlet please don't get confused it is not impeller outlet pressure compressor discharge pressure means casing outlet pressure and impeller back and above the wheel seal actually there are two sections if you see carefully this is wheel seal it has a impeller back side there is a portion which is above the wheel seal and there is also a portion which is below the wheel seal so area which is above is called area above the wheel seal and which is below is called impeller back pressure or back wheel in compressor since there is no you know what is called the both both the pressure above the wheel seal and pressure below the wheel seal are same so in our calculation we are consider only one pressure and we we can call it as a stage 1 impeller back and above the seal pressure which is uh, comprising this area so whole area minus the shaft dimension area so this is the impeller back and above wheel seal pressure and then we have impeller front pressure you can see this the, the curve area pressure which is acting on is the front pressure now in compressor this suction pressure doesn't change normally it doesn't change but the compressor discharge pressure will change because it depends on how much machine is loaded during a start up the pressure will be lower when when you increase the speed in case of variable speed compressor or in case of fixed speed machine when you open more igb then in that case in that case also the pressure will increase flow is also increase the most important the wheel pressure or impeller outlet pressure depends on suction pressure and compressor outlet pressure so more the compressor outlet pressure the impeller outlet pressure compressor outlet if compressor outlet pressure is more impeller outlet pressure is also more but suction pressure is not changing so you can say for variation point of view the impeller outlet pressure is dependent primarily on compressor discharge pressure so if compressor discharge pressure is more this pressure is also more what about this pressure the curve area pressure it is just average of suction pressure and this pressure so when compressor discharge pressure is more it has more impact the compressor discharge pressure back wheel pressure will is very high as compared to this because there is a one component which is suction side it is average so there is no much variation on this area so impact is when compressor is loaded then this pressure becomes more predominant whereas when compressor is operating with lower pressure this pressure becomes low and it is why when compressor is started you can see the wheel pressure becomes low because discharge pressure is low as compressor is loaded and compressor either speed is increased or compressor igb has increased you can see the compressor discharge pressure is increasing as well as compressor back wheel pressure is also increasing and because of this variation you will see the rotor initially rotor is thrusted towards this side we'll show in the next slide why it is happening because this suction pressure is fixed yes there of course there is a various uh, initially there is a pressure on this so this rotor is more than this pressure but when machine is loaded to design condition this pressure becomes too much prominent uh, strong enough than compared to these two and because of this rotor is thrusted towards this end and this is the theory or this is the main point which which is the you know which i'm trying to see you
now what are the forces of course force is equal to pressure into area pressure should be in absolute pressure and area area is a fixed because impeller is a fixed so there is no variation of area the variation is only in pressure as i have already explained you when compressor has less pressure of course the wheel pressure is lesser when compressor has discharge pressure is more you have a more dis more this pressure the impact of variation on this side pressure is mainly affected because of uh, because of this this uh, discharge pressure so when when compressor suction pressure as said it is almost constant when the machine is loaded the impact of or this pressure is very very high so if you look at what are the forces the only one area here which is having force we call it as a suction pressure which is f1 it is shown here similarly curve area pressure we can say impeller front area force that is f2 and the third one you can call it impeller back pressure because we have to consider total so which is f3 so only three forces are acting on the rotor for single stage machine and if you look at carefully because of change of compressor discharge pressure there is a variation of the that side pressure and because of this at the lower pressure this pressure becomes less and because of this this rotor is thrust is like this but no moment compressor discharge pressure reaches to design condition this pre, uh, this pressure becomes strong enough to overcome that these two pressures and rotor is thrust is towards impeller end okay now we know uh, we know that we we call this is a free end pressure this is impeller end just for understanding purpose so suction force is equal to f1 impeller front force is equal to f2 and impeller back and uh, above the seal force is f3 so force towards the free end is equal to f1 plus f2 of course these are the two forces f1 and f2 this is which, which is acting on this side which is called free end side means this side and force towards the impeller in which is this side is only f3 so condition is when the net force if you calculate on the impeller side that means this side of course this f3 that is impeller end minus these two forces which is free end if it is positive of course rotor will be this side if it is negative rotor will be the other. that means when f3 is greater than summation of these two rotor will be this side if f3 is a, a smaller than these two of course rotor will be this side same thing it is written here you can see this this is a rotor when machine is operating with a lower discharge pressure of course because of the lower this pressure forces will be lesser in that case the this net force will become negative because this force is lesser so f3 is lesser than these two forces and so rotor will be thrusted towards this free end which is shown here because f free end which is uh, this this forces is greater than these forces and that is why rotor is thrusted towards this in case of uh, you know the rotor is uh, in case when machine is running uh, at design condition in that case this forces this force is more than these two forces that is why this becomes positive and this is how it is shown here so rotor is thrust towards this when the rotor compressor is lower than this side, same thing it is written it is thrust towards this side when compressor reaches to design condition this rotor is thrust so in design condition for single stage machine rotor is always thrust towards impeller end so i hope you have enjoyed uh, the session for axial thrust on the rotor let me summarize this so there are various forces acting on the impeller front curve area and back side and there is a variation of uh, back side pressure because of uh, variation of discharge pressure at the lower discharge pressure back wheel pressure is lesser at the higher discharge pressure back wheel pressure is more the forces is just equal to area into pressure but since area is a fixed so only forces depends on the pressure variation so when compressor is running at lower pressure the back wheel pressure back wheel pressure or back wheel pressure is low that means back wheel forces will be low in that case 
rotary thrust is towards front side when the machine is operating at the design condition that time the back wheel pressure becomes high in that case back wheel forces becomes more than the front plus suction forces and because of this rotor is thrust is towards impeller end and so in design condition you can say rotor is designed in such a way that rotor is thrust is towards impeller end at the design speed or design condition or design discharge pressure so i hope you enjoyed this thank you thank you for watching